Hello and welcome in this session on teaching as a profession. As a teacher, many times we feel that are we really professional? In India, teaching was not considered as a full-fledged profession for long. It was more service. As a student of teacher education, as a student of education, we always deal with this dilemma not only as an individual, not only as a teacher, but also as an individual who deals with the teacher. That is teaching a profession and if it is, then how teaching is a profession. In today's discussion, I would like to, in today's discussion, I will try to explain the dimensions and aspects through which you can consider teaching as a profession. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh from School of Education IGNO, your course instructor for this course and let us explore that how teaching is a profession. There is a very famous saying of Sir Ronald Gold and Sir Ronald said, the impact of the mind on mind and character on character counts for so much that the most important element in educational service after the child himself is the teacher. You just try to analyze the beautiful words which have been used here to explain the role of teacher. What is a profession? If we try to decide that teaching is a profession, then let us first try to analyze that what is a profession. According to dictionary.com, the term profession has its origin from a Latin word called professio, which originally means the declaration of a belief in or acceptance of religion or a faith. So, I think initially profession was not in the modern meaning. Initially the meaning of profession was how you profess any belief or faith, that was profession. But it is in 16th century, this meaning has expanded its meaning. This meaning has expanded and profession means a body of persons which are engaged in some occupation. So, the meaning of profession has moved from its original meaning to the present meaning. But if we consider anything as a profession or if there is any profession, then there are certain conditions associated with the profession. Let us try to see what these conditions are. A profession is an occupation which requires some specialized study or training. So, my suggestion is that you keep on comparing the teaching profession with these characteristics. Is teaching is an occupation which requires some specialized study or training? Yes, we do some teacher training programs, we do some study of teacher education courses and programs, we earn certain skills, it means it is a profession. The next characteristics of profession is that it has a purpose of which it is generally provide skilled services and guidance in lieu of a definite fee or remuneration. On this criteria also teaching is a profession because we are being paid for our services in our schools and our institution and our schools and institutions are charging fee for the guidance or the skills which are being provided to our learners there. It is a profession which is based upon a specialized study or training, yes it is. And if any professional provides professional service for a limited period of time, when his or her clientele are in an institution or within the institutional framework, then it is called profession. Where are our clientele? Most of our clientele is in our schools, in our colleges, which is a particular place. And we provide our services for a particular specified time. It can be from 9.30 to 4, it can be from 7 to 2, it does not matter. But we have certain fixed time 
where we provide information to our learners. We provide facility to our students. We help them in learning new skills, in gaining new ideas, in constructing new knowledge. So it means teaching is a profession. While defining profession and while searching the definitions of the profession, I came across with some, you know, entirely different meaning. So I thought it should also be discussed. According to Friedson, the original professionals addresses each other and the members of a ruling elite who shared some of their knowledge and belief in its virtues. Try to correlate it with teaching. Are we qualifying this definition? I think we not. They did not address the common people or the common specialized traits. Are we qualifying this line? No, we did not. Because B address the concerns of the common people. B address the requirements of our common learners. And we are not put our knowledge in the closed doors which can be shared with only elites. We share our knowledge with everyone who wants to learn. So this definition is not qualifying our requirements as a teaching profession, though in some professions it may be. So what are the common characteristics of a profession? A profession demands possession of a body of a specialized knowledge and extended practical training. As I have already told you, our teaching professions also requires a specialized knowledge of pedagogy, of behavior, of learner, of learning, of assessment, of classroom management, all these are specialized knowledges. And we also require certain practical training and practices in form of internship, in form of teacher training, through which we develop our skills. A profession renders an essential social service. Yes, teaching renders essential social service. Teaching is a profession for the society, by the society. We prepare individuals as per the needs and requirements of the society. We have been given the responsibility to develop the individuals as active and meaningful citizens of the society, of the country. So we have an essential social service component associated with it. Along with that, many of you are involved in various other social services which are not directly linked with your teaching learning. It can be making aware to the society members about different issues, participating in the debates on the issues which are of the social concern, giving your opinion and sharing your opinion with all about certain issues, and a profession demands continuous in-service training of its members. And yes, no one can say that in teaching, whatever you learn or whatever you get training at the starting as a pre-service teacher training program, it can be diploma in elementary education, it can be bachelor of education or any, you do not require after that any training you require. Because in teaching learning, things change, things are changing, pedagogies are changing, scenarios are changing, even sometimes paradigm shifts are there directly from behaviorism to constructivism new assessment techniques are coming, new technologies are emerging. So you need a continuous in-service training also to keep on learning, to keep on experiencing new things and to keep on skilling yourself, re-skilling yourself. A profession has a clearly defined membership of a particular group you have. You are the membership of a larger teaching community you know who is a teacher, who can be defined as a teacher and you belongs to that community, that group. That group can be a discipline oriented group like science teachers group, mathematics teachers group, physics teachers group, teacher educators group or it can be a larger community like teacher. Because that community, that professional body sometimes safeguard your interest in the profession. You are also a member of different bodies, associations who fights for your 
interests and safeguarding your interests in the profession. Every profession involves a code of ethics, so the teachers are. Teachers also have a code of ethics, whether it is higher education mm -hmm. teacher or school teacher. You may have a code of ethics which has been decided by the principal of a school or the management of a school. If it is a chain of the school or if it is a good or big organization, the organization may have given you a code of ethics. Many organizations like NCRT publish a lot of code of ethics. NCTE has once given a code of ethics for teachers. So there are always code of ethics involved in teaching profession. And a profession assures its members as a professional career. We also have our professional career. We get our career advancement schemes. We get promoted from one label to another label with certain procedures. So it means on this criteria also, teaching is a profession. So if teaching is a profession, then who is a professional teacher? I will start with a very famous quote of Brown, which has, he has given in 2008. I believe I am a professional because I am a master at what I do. I love what I do and I make a living at what I do. I engage in this activity known as teaching so much that it is what I live for. Therefore, I believe that I am a professional. How beautifully Brown has explained the expression a professional teacher. Who is a professional teacher? who has mastery of his actions, mastery on his or her actions. Whatever he or she is doing, he is a master of that, she is a master of that. Teachers love what they do. Every professional loves their profession. And they earn their livings of what they do. So do the teachers. And a true professional teacher basically live as a teacher. He or she is so much engaged in all the activities of teaching that he always feels, she always feels that he or she is a teacher. You just take an example from your society, from your neighborhood. If anyone in your family is a teacher or you are a teacher as you are, not only students expect you that you are a teacher, even society expects you, you are a teacher, you cannot do this. How can you do this? You are in teaching profession. You are expected to set some certain high standards, some values, some morality, some ethics, which you need to follow within the institution as well as outside of the institution. So it means you need to live a life as a teacher. That is a true professional teacher, according to Brown. Wise also tried to explain the characteristics of a professional teacher that a professional teacher has a firm grasp of the subjects she or he is teaching and is true to the intellectual demands of the discipline. So a good professional teacher is always master of the content, master of the subject. A professional teacher has the ability to analyze the needs of the students for whom she or he is responsible. A professional teacher know what are the standards of the practice of the profession? You may not be following sometimes. Few of you may not be following all the standards, but you know what are the standards. If you are not following, you also know that I am not following a standard of that particular label. It means a professional teacher knows what are the standards of the practices in this profession. And he or she also knows that he or she is accountable for meeting the needs of the students. So all these are characteristics of a professional teacher. From here we have drawn the characteristics of teaching profession. Till now we have discussed what is profession, what are the characteristics of a profession and we tried to correlate the characteristics of the profession with the characteristics of the teaching. But if we try to specify the characteristics of teaching profession, what it involves? It involves essentially an intellectual operation, operation which involve intellectual practices. It draw material from science. When I am saying it draws material from science, it learn how to go ahead. It follow a systematic procedure. It transforms the raw material into practical and definite. And what is that raw material? 
textbook is a raw material no content is a raw material no then what is that raw material the, that raw material is the student who is coming to the class at the day one and with the facilitation with the empathy with the content with the exposure with the experience with the experiments you convert it into a desired citizen of the society which is a definite framework teaching profession possesses an educationally communicable technique it has teaching profession tends towards self organization it involves a lot of self organization though there are code of ethics though there are methodologies though there are models there are principles there are designs but it is more of self organization it is the teacher who organize himself or herself to present the content and present the himself or herself in front of the student it essentially performs a social service i have already discussed about it then it has a lengthy period of study and training yes you cannot become a teacher in one day or two day you need to earn certain degrees certain diplomas you need to do some training only then you are eligible to become a teacher but it has high degree of autonomy autonomy in the sense of how you will deal with your learners you may not have the autonomy in terms of curriculum in your school because curriculum sometimes is being prescribed by the regulatory authority or the body which is has given recognition to your institution but how you will translate that curriculum how you will transmit the knowledge according to that curriculum it is up to you what kind of examples you will use what kind of resources you will use what kind of methodology you will use how you will interact with your learners what kind of experiences you will provide to your learners to gain the knowledge in that particular domain or in that particular area it is all up to you so you have a high degree of autonomy in your class it is a based upon a systematic body of knowledge yes it is teaching profession has common code of ethics and it generates in service growth too so when we are talking about teaching profession we should also talk about what are the challenges which we face as a teacher in teaching profession because every profession is movable it is an ongoing process it is a it is on a continuum so teaching profession also faces certain challenges those challenges can be related to the changing of technological trends can we have dealing with gen z can be related to the continuous self learning or can be related to the conflict management when i'm talking about the challenges related to changing technological trends you know as a teacher you need to adopt the newer methods of online learning and teaching continuously now especially we all are talking about online education the future belongs to online education we need to blend the online practices in our traditional face to face practices how we will do that are we ready for that do we have desired skills for that do we know how we can deal with the instrument do we know how will we behave in an online environment we need to learn this this is a biggest challenge changing teaching methodologies along with the technology change methodology also change so we need to adopt new methodologies sometimes like in a smart classroom teaching you need to learn how to act in a smart classroom how to deal with those instruments which are involved in a smart classroom not only how to teach but also how to assess how to examine your learners in online scenario by using the technology all these are challenges which teaching profession is facing and we need to overcome these challenges with our practices and persistent efforts then comes another challenge dealing with the gen z actually there is always a generation gap between teacher and learner you have learned something in a different scenario when you came to classroom you will find the learners who are coming from a different environment or different scenario so teaching profession was never so challenging as it is now you need to adapt the smarter and interesting ways of teaching because now the students these days have certain characteristics number one they have very limited attention span so if if you think you can teach them 30 40 minutes by only lecturing and not discussing anything not showing them anything you cannot 
they have hardly attention span of 3 minutes, 4 minutes, 5 minutes, 7 minutes. Maximum anyone have 10 minutes, not more than that. So how you will keep them attentive in the classroom? You need to learn them. Now, the gadgets have entered in the classroom, whether it is mobile, whether it is laptop, whether it is smart classroom. And your learners are more comfortable than you using these gadgets. So they prefer to learn through gadgets. You prefer sometimes to teach through classroom lectures. This is again a challenge for you. So you also need to learn how to deal with the gadgets. There was a time even mobile phones were not allowed in the classroom. Now without mobile phone you cannot imagine a classroom. So how to deal in such situation? How a student can use mobile phones and other gadgets effectively and constructively? It is again a challenge. And you need to monitor it, you need to ensure it. Then, if these are some challenges, then to motivate yourself to keep learning continuously, continuous self-learning is again a challenge. Mm -hmm. Teachers need to keep up with the emerging talents, theories and knowledge in various subjects. Knowledge in various subjects continues to emerge such as in economics, business studies, biology, many different disciplines. You take any discipline, knowledge is emerging. New theories are being add, added. New discoveries are there. New inventions are there. New policies, new models are there. And you need to accommodate that new content in the syllabus. You need to deliver that content to your learners. But before that, you need to learn about that content on your own. So teacher, especially a college teacher, now even a school teacher, need to study continuously and keep updating their knowledge base. It is a challenge. Conflict management is also a challenge for teachers in the classroom as a professional. One of the most challenging part of teaching profession is to manage classroom conflicts among the students. You came across a lot of situations in your class where students have certain conflicts on many minor issues or it can be on many major issues. They may like one actor, other may like another actor and there can be a conflict. Political ideologies of the family can create a conflict. Liking or disliking towards a teacher or towards a method or towards an instrument can create conflict. So it can be any issue, but you will find a lot of situations where in classroom students have conflict. How to manage that conflict? This is your challenge. You need to learn the skill to deal with the students where conflicting situations are. You need to understand and carefully tackle the short-tempered students specifically and also the students who are interrupting the classroom disciplines continuously. So if this is the situation, if this is the situation, your professional development is essential. Without continuous professional development, where you learn all these skills to deal with these situations, whether these are technological changes, whether there are conflict management changes, whether there are uh, change, challenges which are coming with the advancement of the knowledge in your discipline or subjects, you need to learn, you need to upgrade, you need to enhance your skills, you need to acquire new skills. This is the requirement. So with this I should say, that as a teacher, as a professional, you have a lot of things to do. You require to deal with all the situations. You require to develop yourself as a teacher. You need to ensure that you are fit within your profession. I again quote the same statement which I have used few minutes back that I am a teacher because I love to be the teacher, because I enjoy in the classroom, because I want to give something to my students, because I love my students, because I need to bring positive and constructive changes in their lives so that they become the constructive and meaningful 
members of the society. So if it is the situation, we need to tackle all such situations in a professional way. But teaching profession is not like other professions. You all will agree with me that when we are talking about a teaching profession, we are basically talking about a situation where what we do, we do the service. We are for the society. That is why there is always a conflict between the traditional thinking about the teacher and the modern thinking about the teacher, where modern thinking propagates the idea of professional teacher, the traditional thinking also believes that teaching is a service and not a profession. But my suggestion is that if we want to discuss, if we want to develop ourselves as a professional, we need to identify the skills where we need to improve. We need to learn the ways through which we can facilitate teaching learning to our learners and we should keep on working on our learning situations. We should keep on working on our upliftment, growth and development. So with this, I must say that be a professional teacher, behave like a professional teacher and contribute in the development of the society as well as in the development of your profession. Thank you very much.